All right, generators, alternators, and motors. If you had you had fun with magnetos, don't you, don't you even do? <laughs> you're gonna have fun this week. Because last week was the only easy week. That's not true. You said that every week this week you're lying. Okay, generators, alternators, and motors. I'm, I'm trying a new format here. So a little bit. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I tried to move everything up out of the little no-go spot here. Sorry. Purpose of a generator to convert mechanical energy to electrical energy. I like my slides here. What do we have here? An engine. There we go. Nice yeah. big Lycoming six-cylinder. What the heck is this thing? Yeah, that looks that looks like like a, that looks like a Ram Air turbine. This is a Ram Air turbine. I was doing an annual inspection on a Lescom, which uh, did not have a generator system. And on the bottom of it, it had a, uh, a Toyota alternator with, a, with a, an actual Toyota fan on it. And you could tell because they're a little lopsided. And they don't, like, that's off a car radiator thing. And, and uh, it was legitimate. And it was STC. The guy just never did the STC paperwork. I'm like, well, I don't have any paperwork. Well, it came with an STC. Well, did you put it in the logbooks in the 337? Was I supposed to? <laughs> you were supposed to, yes. All right. That's fine. All right, so let's review this. This is kind of the problem with my new theory here, is that is that uh, what you're looking at is actually, you guys can't, yeah, you can see the little green flashies. Yeah. And that's what you're seeing if it's online. <coughs> and so this was originally set up so I could push buttons and each things would kind of come on at once and it won't do that now so uh, there you go thank you so how's voltage induced in a conductor well, we talked about this we need three items to generate current flow they are the magnetic field of conductor and relative motion does it matter if the wire moves or if the magnets move doesn't matter wire can move conductor can move I see. no wire is a conductor <laughs> The wire can move, the magnets can move, or they can both move as long as they don't move in the same, same direction. direction. So that would not work if they're both going this way. Okay, so relative movement. We need rel relative movement. All right, um, let's see. Is this going to work this way for me? Let's see. Well, now, I, there we go. Let's just do it the way I originally intended to do it. It should be a slideshow. Current slide. Is it gonna work? There we go. Um, back up one. Magnetic field conductor relative motion. No, oh, whatever. This is. I tried to fix it. Now it fell apart. Now the whole thing. Never mind. It's gone. Um, all right. So we got to ad lib here. Problems. Pro problems. I don't know how to do this. All right. Uh, well, that wasn't very practical to have it looking like that, and we just moved the wire up and down. That's, that was the problem. And so what becomes the solution is to wrap the wire into some sort of loop. And you remember we talked about this a few weeks ago. So we're going to wrap. And what is this particular loop of wire called? Coil. It's not a coil. A coil in this case. It's, it's called an armature. I got it right there, an armature. So, all right, so this particular armature has got these little items here, which I will call slip rings in this case, and brushes. And the brushes are made out of what? Carbon. Some sort of carbon, so they can slide along these brushes. Now, remember I told you last time we talked about this, that this loop of wire here, it's not connected to this brush. It runs through this brush, does not touch it, it is connected to this brush. That's a very important point. This wire comes through here, and it is connected to this brush. All right. As the loop of wire rotates around inside of the magnets, we have to consider the fact that these magnets have lines of flux. And I don't know if you can, I guess you can see them okay on there. These lines of flux are represented by some light blue lines. And where is the flux density the greatest? In the middle in here. All right. So a couple things to consider. One, that the flux density is the greatest in the middle. And number two, the greatest voltage occurs as the conductor passes at right angles to the flux, which is to say when it's traveling up and down. 
down or up on this and this. That is at a right angle or cutting across the lines of flux. The least amount of voltage occurs when it's going parallel. In fact, even if it was right here going parallel, we would have nothing. So as the loop of wire is down in this position here and here, it is in the middle and it is traveling up and it's traveling down and it's cutting through the lines of flux. That is when the voltage is at its maximum. When it reaches the top, it dies off to nothing because it's going pretty much parallel. We talked about the left-hand rule of thumb to figure out what it's going to look like as this happens. So you guys have to remember this. The thumb is the motion. This is the field. That's the current, right? So thumb points in direction of motion. Pointer finger points in direction of field, north to south. And middle finger points in direction of current flow. Plus, minus to plus, which is conventional or electron? Electron. 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 Am I losing you guys already? Huh? <laughs> You're supposed to yeah. yell out what? Yep. Capacitance? Right. <laughs> Frequency. 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 Frequency, okay. The left hand, so which way is the current flowing? Well, if I had this set up correctly, I would hit buttons and you'd have to tell me, and eventually you'd come up with that's the negative and that's the positive, but it already shows. But we can prove it with the left hand rule of thumb, and that's our electrician's gang sign. Oh, no, so direction of movement, it's going up. So this is Tom's gang sign? <laughs> oh, I need to talk about that too when we're off <laughs> offline. So, all right, and I'm out of field. So, um, I'm out of field. Camera. All right, so uh, direction of current flow, and so what do we got? We have negative over here and positive over here, and that becomes an important point because of this. So when we take all of that and apply it to what we're looking at here, we have to think about what's going on here. Now, it doesn't matter which way this is rotating, right or left. It really doesn't matter. What matters is we realize that A, loop A, is cutting through lines of flux this way, and B is going that way. And if we take, well, I'm sorry, it does matter. Um, it is going to be going this way, that way. All right, so going up that way, I got motion going up. I've got the field going from north to south, <laughs> right, because it's upside down this way. And that means that the direction of current flow is going out around that loop like this. Follow? All right. Not C. It's A and B. So as the arrows show, it is going this way. Well, that means that it's going this way and it's coming out of this brush through the load and back this way. Everybody can see that, I hope. So as it comes through here, it makes that loop. And that's just fantastic until there's loop A on this side. Loop A, not loop A. Loop A is on the south side. And now loop A, uh-oh, that's not going to work because it's under the point that's hidden. Oh, we're just moving stuff around, aren't we? That's all right. Oh, that's why I left it that way, because that's all. That's all. All right. That's fine. It's out of the bad zone. All right. So loop B is now over here on the south side. And so we apply the same left-hand rule of thumb. And it's um, motion. It's still going up um, from north to south. And everything still stays the same. So it's still whatever's on this south side, the current is going to flow around this way. But instead of, but now it's going to come all the way down here. And it's going to go backwards through here. You guys remember that? Uh -huh. So now it's going backwards. And I think my next slide shows them side by side, and it does. And so in one direction, it's going this way. In one direction, it's going that way. So what does that ultimately lead? Well, what have we just learned? I you don't know what you've learned, but hopefully what you have learned, the greatest voltage is produced as the conductor moves at right angles to the flux line. And the left-hand rule shows as current is reversing direction. So on your little screen, it just says uh, the left-hand rule shows as is reversing direction. But does it show it all on the screen? Yes, it does. The do not go boxes right like that. Thank you for asking. No, we can understand the following. That's what we should be able to understand. So this right here, the loops are going parallel to the lines of flux. Therefore, I have pretty much nothing. Over here, it's cutting the maximum lines of flux. So I have 
maximum voltage, but it's going to reverse and go back to zero as that loop cuts up to here. But then it's going to go around the other way and start to swing negative and come around to zero. So that's why we have a sine wave that looks like a sine wave. And that's why it's producing AC and not DC. But we want to talk about generators. And if we're going to talk about generators, generators produce DC voltage. They do not produce AC voltage as an output. So inside of a generator, uh, this is really what you have. You have a loop of wire, but you have a lot of loops of wire. Uh, and these loops of wire are going to be going around inside of magnets, both permanent magnets and electric, elect, uh, electromagnets is the word I'd like to say, but the stroke is preventing me. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's all funny to my own. Uh, <laughs> it's on camera. Uh, Did you drink coffee today? No, maybe that's my problem. Uh, I don't have ADD, but yet that makes me think of like 10 different things to talk about. So sorry. <laughs> okay, so we're talking about a generator. That's the little picture up here of a generator. And so a generator is loops of wire rotating around inside of magnets. And so we're producing AC to start, but we don't want AC out because a DC generator produces DC. That's the name. So how am I going to remember a DC generator produces DC voltage? I don't know. There's got to be a rhyme, some, some way to rhyme that together. All right. So in, in the pictures back here, we had these loops of wire. We had a brush, and, and one came out here, and one came down here. But we're going to get rid of that. Now we're going to go to something called a commutator. All right. So notice what's happened here is the brush has been, or the, I should say the, the loops of wire have been now shortened so they're the same size, and it goes to... One, one half of a shell here and another half here. And you can see it here, half and half. All right? And we're going to start with this and we'll get to where we're going. And then it has brushes the same way. But what's going to happen is, hopefully I show. That will. All right. As, as this loop of wire here, whatever's on the top, rotates around, we'll have it coming around the same way, it's going to then hit on this brush. And this brush is going to be set up so that I guess we could say current is flowing that way. And so if it's flowing that way, when this wire is down here and this wire is up that way, it's going to be flowing, we'll say, back in. So then we can say that this would be the positive or negative brush. From negative to positive. All right. So thanks for playing, though. And now when it rotates around, so it's this way, when it rotates around again, now this brush is going to be over here. And is it going to reverse or stay the same? It's going to stay the same because when this loop is over here, it comes out. When this loop is over here, it comes out. We'll go back up a little bit. So it's whatever loop was right here had it going out. Um, this loop here has it go. So it, here it is in. This loop here comes out. This loop here went out. It's just in different spots. So now we're coming back here. So that can make this one always negative. So you follow me? Okay. So and that's what's happening. So you're going to arrange your brushes so that the negative brush always touches the negative commutator segment, and that segment is going to roll away and come around over to here. And now it becomes the positive, which is a good thing because it's on the positive side. OK, so this is really how a generator does it with uh, mechanically changes the AC into DC. It uses commutators. Well, it can't just do one loop of wire uh, because uh, what would that look like? Um, it would kind of look like this. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? I bet I should have a slide that shows you that. But it would look like that. So we'll go back there. That was fine. So it builds up, dies off, builds up. But it would, at least it's all on the same. But lights would get kind of bright and dim and bright and dim. Sort of, I don't know. That would not work out as well. So we can make this more efficient. But this is pretty much showing the same thing. So uh, let's see. This is the one we started with, where we had the two slip rings farther apart. and. We had alternating current out. Mm -hmm. Then we take it, and it's the same, just a different drawing. So now we're doing direct current out by making it with a commutator. All right, so with the commutator, hey, I was right. This is what it's going to look like. 
So if you look at the, I, don't, I hope you can see that well from where you're sitting, this is the negative side and it stays the negative side. It's very consistent all the way across. This is the negative side. It never changes, negative, negative, negative. And this is the positive side over here, positive, 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 and positive. And so when the armature is this way, we have zero because it is going parallel to the lines of flux. And then as it rolls back down, we have maximum lines of flux, so it's going to be maximum, and it's going to come out this commutator segment, travel through the light, light is on, rolls back up this way, we're back to zero, rolls through again, and we go to the maximum. This time it's just the CD loop. At first it was the AB loop over here, now it's the CD loop over here. It doesn't matter, it's just on the right side of the screen over here, so that makes it the negative side out. And we have current flow, and then we come back over here, we got zero, and just keeps repeating, repeating, repeating. It works, but not as well as it should. So we can improve the output by adding multiple windings and multiple commutator segments. And so now what happens is these commutator segments line up with the brushes so that it picks up just the high spot of every curve. So right as it starts to dip off, this is going to rotate and pick up on the next one. Starts to dip off, rotates, picks up on the next one. And so you're always just picking up the high side of the curve. Pretty cool. All right, what is a generator? Device that converts mechanical energy to electrical energy. You should have said that. You learned about that. Function of the commutator and the brushes. So what is the commutator and the brushes? You would say? Changes, yes, you would say that right there. Changes the voltage output of the generator from AC to DC. <coughs> oh, I won't make you memorize that. All right, objectives for section two. Teach you some stuff. This is a good spot for a break, but before you run off,